Good evening. I'd like to introduce myself again. This is Linda Gorski, and I'm the president of the Houston Archaeological Society, and I want to introduce you to our meeting tonight, to our speaker tonight, who is Gary Pinkerton, the author of Trammell's Trace, The First Road to Texas from the North. Um, we're delighted to have Gary here tonight because his program has been put off twice now, has been postponed twice now. So we were not trying to jinx it all day today with the rain. So Gary has a master's of social work from the University of Houston and a bachelor's degree in social work and psychology from Texas A&M University of Commerce. As an independent researcher and human resources consultant, he contributes to diverse projects. He's a member of the editorial board of the East Texas Historical Association. His work also appears in online encyclopedia of Arkansas history and culture, the online handbook of Texas, the portal to Texas history, and the journal of diving history. So I would like to introduce to you Gary Pinkerton. Welcome to the uh, 21st century version of a tin can and a string. That's what I'm thinking now we're working here, but we've got it working and, and it looks great. So I wanna, before I start into the talk, I wanna recap uh, how we all got here. Uh, I was the next guy to be scheduled to talk before this all got shut down like 27 years ago. Was it that, that, that long? I can't remember now. It seems like forever, but the world closed down and it wasn't that long ago. And uh, so the technology wizards, Liz and others came up with the uh, Zoom meetings and we know how those work uh, just perfectly uh, all the time, right? It's, it's a tricky technology and uh, has made it possible for the group to continue to meet uh, face to face. And then I was scheduled to talk again on the Zoom meeting and we had a snowpocalypse. <laughs> in Houston, that was me. So that got canceled. And then um, everything was set up this uh, to start again in June. And that was interrupted by some kind of pagan ritual involving body odor and mosquito spray. I don't really know, under, fully understand what the, what the draw was, but uh, here we are uh, finally able to get together and uh, you know, I've been waiting a long time to get ready to do this talk. So when Linda told me to take a shower and clean up a little bit, I was I was all for it. So I do want you to take a, just a moment to look around you and find the nearest exit. It may be behind you. And uh, please sign the disclaimer under the chair because it's not my fault in the event of any current or future natural disasters. So. So with that taken care of, let's let's talk about roads because that's really uh, the broad category of my conversation about Trammell's Trace. And, I, and of course, we're not talking about these kind of roads. We're talking about ancient roads. You know, the ones before Bucky's. Uh, those were uh, were out there, but uh, pathways are everywhere. And when you start thinking about these ancient routes as pathways, uh, it opens up your eyes a bit and. Uh, you know, ants leave trails of pheromones, uh, birds keep flying these pathways that we still don't understand how they manage that. And that bottom picture is uh, what my wife and I were greeted with the other morning with snails making their way across the window. It was some very interesting uh, trails that they left. Uh, but this quote is from a very cool book, if you have interest in this area, called about On Trails by Robert Moore. And he mentioned that we we all move through this world on paths laid down long before we were born. Uh, one of my principles in finding uh, old roads, historic roads like uh, Trammell's Trace has been that new roads follow old roads and at least until the bulldozers show up, right? So the terrain, uh, animal trails, this is a great picture that Rachel Galan at uh, Kettle Mounds uh, State Historic Site uh, took. Uh, you know, bison trails were, followed by uh, people over centuries as they made their migrations, the historic trading trails, uh, Jason uh, Barrett and others have uh, talked about uh, over time, uh, grew and when the uh, early Spanish Entradas began, they didn't invent their roads, they took these 
you know, mile wide entradas tromping across the general direction of trails led by the, the guides of the Indians who lived uh, in that region. And then of course, Anglos uh, came into uh, Texas in particular and began using those same ancient trading trails. Uh, the Caddo Trace is essentially uh, the, the prehistoric route of, of uh, Trammell's Trace. But as humans, particularly, we're, we're just born to do that. We just want to see what's around the corner. Those roads on the right and the left were made by animals, and the person who formed the trail on the right had a different idea in a different direction, but they all converge uh, at this one spot and make their way across the terrain for different reasons and for different places. So that's just a lead up to tell you about uh, kind of my origin story with uh, Trammell's Trace. This is a picture of me on a rut that goes across some property that my family has had forever in uh, East Texas, north of Mount Enterprise. And um, when I was about uh, 50 plus years old, my dad just happened to mention Trammell's Trace. And so I asked him, what, what the heck is that? He said, oh, that's that rut out there in that pasture that y'all play in all the time. And so, you know, I relied on the only three things, uh, really virtues that I possess, which is the opportunity to recognize a serendipitous moment, uh, some dangerous curiosity, <laughs> and uh, persistence. Some of you are really familiar with these traits yourselves. Uh, of course, that gets you to be the stubborn pest who asks too many questions about obscure things. That's really how that, that character trait works out. It's also a good time to introduce you to my wife, Mickey, in the back, who understands this trait all too well and earned her spot in the index of the book under Wife Wonderful. So when you get to do your own index, that's how you do it. So I did what every human does. Now you Google that stuff, right? You, that's where you start. You try to find out what else is out there and see what's going on. And what I learned very quickly was that there was a man and his wife in the 1940s, uh, James Dawson on the right, was a civil engineer in the uh, Texarkana office, Bowie County, right in the heart of, you know, Trammell's Trace territory. And he and his wife uh, began researching uh, Trammell's Trace. He, the map maker, the draftsman, uh, mapping out the trail, and his wife uh, writing a story. And I learned a couple of things, many things from them. One is some history of the road but I also learned from reading their manuscript that any book can quickly turn into a history of the world unless you narrow your focus. So uh, I focused in on what the Dawson's were uh, trying to do. And what I learned very early on was that Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, Sam Houston made their way down that road across our family land uh, on their way to, uh, into Texas. And the 14-year-old uh, the educated uh, brain that I have immediately thought, oh my gosh, Sam Houston could have taken a leak on our property. <laughs> that was my pivotal moment that started all this. Uh, and that was my, when I became a rut nut. That was when I was totally hooked into learning more and more and more about the pieces. And at that time, Google had a lot of myth and legend and and falsehoods about trammel and not much information about the trace. And, uh, you know, the more you dig, particularly over the, the number of years I've been uh, pursuing this, the more the facts come to life. And one of the interesting things about Trammell's Trace is that it, it's a really a dual history of this road named after a person. There are 15 or 16 National Historic Trails and only two have any names related to the person. Trails are named where where the trail goes, right? The road uh, to somewhere or the Natchez Trace. This one's named for a guy who was a, had a very interesting history of his own starting out in Tennessee. He grew up in Rogues Harbor. What a, what a moniker for your early neighborhood, right? But his family were farmers and traders. Uh, Trammell was in jail uh, for larceny and stealing cattle and minor offenses. Uh, and then he and many other Tennesseans made their way to Northeastern uh, Arkansas, Missouri Territory at the time along the White River um, and farther down and farther down and farther down into southwest Arkansas and then finally into Texas um, in the 1820s. 
a lot of myth and legend uh, about uh, Trammell and his exploits, but occasional wonderful tidbits. And so uh, with my background, I, I'm very interested in the personality of people. And there wasn't much about Trammell that wasn't, was totally factual and firsthand. But I found this account in the, from the uh, 1840s, a soldier with the, kind of the way of the war with Mexico came through Washington, Arkansas, and Trammell uh, was hired to be their trail guide since he knew Texas. And he said that Trammell would perform with fidelity and honor whatever he undertook, but it was prudent to watch him after he completed his engagement. <laughs> so I forgive you if you're thinking about family members who you count the China when they leave after Thanksgiving, but that's kind of how I read that. And it perfectly fit with what I'd learned and knew about him. He was not uh, a criminal, in the, you know, toting a gun and robbing people face to face. But if you treated him wrong, he would sue you and go through court cases. Uh, he went through one case with five different judges in Arkansas, some who had to recuse himself because they'd been his attorney for an earlier appeal, over $300. That's the guy he was. So great description. He uh, in, ended up in Arkansas Territory in, in a major record with a uh, complaint uh, against he and his half-brother uh, by some very prominent Cherokee from not only stealing their horses, but as they told the governor, inciting them to kill uh, white inhabitants, which was not a, a good thing to uh, be accused of. But he did smuggle horses from the Red River prairies uh, down through uh, roads connected to and, and uh, near the trace uh, into Natchez and, and New Orleans. Where things really changed, where the history of Trammell's Trace really begins as an Anglo route is uh, around the uh, Austin's colony and the immigration to Texas that, that kicked off at that time. Uh, he was given uh, directly accredited with being the first to uh, widen the trail with what they call chopping axes and hatchets. That's a picture of the Red River bottom that they had to uh, come through, or the Cypress bottom, uh, to move people from Pecan Point, which was really the first Anglo settlement up on the Red River, uh, Tennesseans as early as uh, 1314, uh, to get people from the Red River, Pecan Point, who were kind of known to be outcasts and, and uh, outlaws and, and uh, not a great place, to get them headed south down to Austin's colony. Trammell himself was uh, named by Stephen F. Austin uh, and directly prohibited from entering the colony because he and uh, William English were known to be criminals and bad men. And I need to pursue this, Eleanor. I get to get Brian to fact follow up on this, but I think he's the only person I've seen named as, oh, no, no. Uh, he's not coming into the colony. Uh, others from Pecan Point did, but where he ended up was on the Trinity River crossing uh, of the El Camino Real. Uh, he got a grant from Hayden Edwards. Uh, the part of that land just happened to be owned by an old Spaniard, and Haydens didn't care uh, didn't care about that, and gave Trammell a ferry crossing uh, on a major road, uh, a pinch point for contraband and smuggling, uh, and uh, planted him right there, 90 miles west of Nacogdoches. Despite the distance, Trammell showed up a lot in Nacogdoches uh, court records uh, for various reasons uh, as a witness and as a uh, defendant. Uh, he was chased off that place uh, in uh, 1826 uh, because of that land dispute, and he and his entire family retreated back into Arkansas at land they'd previously inhabited. Uh, and from 1826 until about uh, 1850 uh, uh, or so, he and his family and sons operated taverns and gambling houses, basically from the uh, uh, from around um, uh, the uh, oh, what, I forget the river, uh, the east side of Arkansas, all the way over to Pecan Point, along that east-west corridor, operating taverns and and uh, gambling houses, well-known stands as they called them, that were a place where you could lose your money and occasionally go vote. That's kind of the combo there. So besides uh, Trammell, I learned a lot about this ancient route, and um, I don't know what it is about roads, but they just are fascinating to me, these pathways that begin used over time and can evolve, and particularly 
roads of this era, you know, a couple hundred years old now, uh, at least for the heaviest use, uh, you can still find remains. So Trammell's Trace was the, the first northern route for immigration into Texas. So if uh, ancestors came to Texas from Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, they likely came down uh, through Fulton and down Trammell's Trace. Uh, these early, uh, early maps kind of indicated uh, bits and pieces of this trail. Uh, Trammell's Trace has two branches I'll show you in a minute. One that went up toward uh, the Red River uh, here to uh, Pecan Point in Jonesboro. Uh, 1801 map showed a, a general path of that route. Uh, Freeman and Custis found uh, crossing routes. Uh, they were along the river, so they didn't, didn't pursue anything uh, inland from there. Uh, the 1841 boundary survey between the U.S. and the Republic of Texas identified Trammell's Trace crossing between Mile Mound uh, 103, uh, 102 and 103. These eight foot tall mounds of dirt with a post in the middle and a bottle with a paper inside it describing the uh, location of the mound. Uh, Aerosmith's uh, map of 1843 had the same curvature that Puelis and Dawson's map on the right side did. Uh, and that, that map was the basis for the one that, uh, that I've used and you're, you've seen. Later maps, uh, this is a Civil War era reconnaissance map uh, along the Sabine River. That's a very famous crossing, Ramsdale's Ferry at the top there where the road forks. By that time, uh, Francis Ramsdale was operating a ferry uh, on the upstream side, the left side, and a natural crossing uh, with Lignite Base was there. And that Hendricks Plantation uh, was the site of uh, a recent archeological effort by uh, John Dockall, Ross Fields, and uh, those guys, the Hendrick Plantation. The source of most of the information about the location of Trammell's Trace, though, very fortunately comes from the General Land Office head right surveys. Um, it's like having a 1,000-piece uh, jigsaw puzzle and uh, 485 pieces have been lost. But you've got enough pieces that you can, you know what's in between that piece here and that piece there. Uh, points that were surveyed and that can be located, converting the varas to coordinates, uh, can find exactly where that was at the time of the survey and following the terrain belief between those points uh, is, is uh, how that works. That's one particular head right survey I'm gonna show you a different picture of just south of Interstate 20 in uh, Marshall where two roads came together. The Trammell's Trace uh, was really the, the point of origin at the Red River, the Great Bend at Fulton, and was a continuation of the Southwest Trail or Old Military Road across the uh, plateau in uh, Arkansas, generally the route of I-30, um, where the uh, plateau to the south and the hills to the uh, northwest. Uh, that road was pushed farther and farther down after the Louisiana Purchase uh, to the uh, edge of the uh, uncertain boundary between uh, the United States and whatever wasn't, uh, whatever was on the other side, Spanish or Mexican. Uh, Trammell's Trace uh, in the mapping across uh, the Red River uh, at the Great Bend at Fulton, uh, curved to the west uh, a bit to another natural crossing that uh, Jim Bruceth and others think the Moscoso expedition used on the uh, Sulphur River that was later Epperson's Ferry. Uh, crossing uh, Cass and Bowie and Marion County uh, into uh, Russ County. The big curve to the right, uh, I've had people ask, wow, did, why do people avoid Marshall so far? And I'm like, well, have you ever been to Marshall? <laughs> no, that's a joke. Uh, it was Caddo Villages over there, of course. And then to the uh, Ramsdale's Ferry crossing at the Sabine. At that point where Rusk Panola and Harrison County touch, Trammell's Trace was defined as two thirds of the county line between Rusk and Panola in 1843. And so it was as significant a landmark at that time even as a river or a stream was. And then down into Nacogdoches, of course, branches uh, off of it to the north avoided Nacogdoches, uh, to the west primarily uh, but also back to the east in later days, down to the Kings Highway and El Camino Real. So a little tour down the uh, down the route of the trace, the Great Bend of the Red River, which was remarkably blue on this day, 
there were ferry crossings there later and multiple ferry crossings because it was the jumping off point uh, for people after the migration kicked up. Uh, there were low water wa uh, wagon crossings and a map of that area, the Civil War embattlements in 1863. I love this map, uh, A, because the color, it's, that's my color. Uh, it shows the ferry there with the oars sticking out to the side and the stippling. Uh, if you've ever been on the bank of a river like the Red, you know that it's crusty on top and soggy on bottom. So you sink up to your knees and horses uh, would as well, uh, where the ford at, at low water was. The, the road that uh, was just on the south side of that was described very tactfully by the map maker as impracticable. I love that. And that uh, was... Uh, it's now cotton fields, but at the time it was documented as seven miles of this, seven miles of cane, 20 to 30 feet tall, curving over the top, uh, basically a darkened tunnel uh, through which people were welcomed to, uh, to uh, Texas. Really great woodcut, see that. Uh, to the south and west of there, uh, along that ridge, this is, we're looking to the south in the photo, that's what calls the commencement of the Red River bottom uh, to the south where I'm standing for the photo and Trammell Strait ran right along that, right along that ridge. Um, see, I'm, I'm gonna, I was gonna tell you how when I go to the river crossings on Trammell Strait, I get chill bumps. And when I thought about it, I got chill bumps. And I get chill bumps because of the people that pass through these pinch points to get across rivers over hundreds of years in our history is just incredible and amazing to me. So to visit points like this where that trail is worn down into the bank going across that Sulphur River bottom, this Corps of Engineers land now, uh, is just a, a, a cool part of this whole project. I mentioned that second branch, the branch that Trammell was credited with opening was the one up to uh, Pecan Point uh, the surveys in Red River County are much later. Uh, there were, and what happens is there's so many roads that cross boundaries that they don't document the roads like they did the earlier ones. And so that dotted line is a, is a, a fairly certain path from Jonesboro down to Pecan Point and connects with the trail at uh, what near what was called Old Unionville in uh, Northwest uh, Cass County there. Continuing on through Marion County, uh, crossing the Big Cypress and the Little Cypress Bayous. If you've been there or if you've just driven by, it looks pretty formidable. It's, you know, it gets flooded and muddy and it's a swamp. But when the water's down, it's just one of the coolest places to be because uh, there's little vegetation. Uh, there's uh, a lot of things uh, exposed when the water goes down. And uh, there's only a few places you can cross reliably, but going through the swamp means that the crossing may be different every time as well. Uh, south of the Cypress were those uh, Caddo villages in, uh, in Harrison County, uh, well documented. And uh, I found this article from 1899 was one of, this is one of those um, explorer type articles, very wonderful language, almost a full page. But they talked about how even in 1899s that these mounds were being opened up in a vain search for a possible clue to its builders. It was very, very dramatic language. Uh, another uh, ferry crossing, another uh, chill bump spot is Ramsdale's Ferry on the Sabine. That waterfall ledge is lignite uh, outcropping crossing that river. Uh, it does so in several times, but this particular point was one of those that was used for uh, over hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, just south of there is Hendricks Lake, and uh, uh, besides the uh, the book on Trammell's Trace, I've written a book about the treasure legends related to this, uh, about Lafitte uh, bearing six wagon loads of silver in this lake, but Trammell's Trace passes just to the east of it. South of the Sabine, from, from there down to Nacogdoches is the Piney Woods of Rusk and Nacogdoches County, and was described in one of those travelogue books that came out after migration began to get heavy as the most agreeable route and far better than the El Camino Real from Natchitoches uh, to the Sabine. And it, they terminated more or less, went around uh, Nacogdoches uh, as the, the center of the universe uh, for East Texas at the time. So people ask, and, and usually the groups I'm speaking to, I don't have to 
I don't ask this question out loud, but people wonder, so what, what is it about an old road? Well, to me, it's the ruts. It's the ruts. There's still ruts out there that define this old road. And uh, the way to find them is to, through some uh, useful science that couldn't be done by a guy like me um, at an earlier time. Uh, this is a snapshot from the mapping software I use called the Terrain Navigator Pro GIS Lite, basically. But uh, the black boxes with the X's are um, survey calls from the Headright surveys. Uh, and uh, the uh, route of the trail is mapped out there along with the boundary of the survey. There is also uh, satellite images that once you get a sense of the trail, I move the line here a bit, you can see the, the shadow of that trail. And, you know, there are, these things are all over the terrain up there, but if they're along the route of historic road, you can be pretty certain uh, why they're there. They, they may have been used, it may be a vestige or it may have just been a current use because new roads follow all roads. But we were able to ground truth that with the uh, landowners and go see that swale following the curvature of the hill, just like that you would expect it to. LIDAR, uh, national, uh, the uh, uh, national map viewer is a godsend uh, for guys like me. You can f find things you would never see, and these LIDAR images are, are pretty darn good. That's a, that star is where our family farm is, and you can see that route to the southeast of that that uh, follows the, uh, the rut that introduced me to this subject. So uh, the ruts are what it's all about and, and getting to go through um, and follow this over a number of years with uh, landowners and with, uh, with others. This is a, a right on the Rusk Panola County line. One of my favorites, not because of, just because of the cow manure in the barn, but because of the way they worked around that rut. And this was, uh, I got in to see this just before it was surface mined and uh, done away with. This is in uh, Cass County up near or Marion County up near Avenger, uh, near Redwater, or some double ruts that exist only in this tree line. I'm standing on a county road there, and to the south of that is a river bottom that's been farmed and, and, uh, and managed over years. This was not far south of Hendricks Lake. Some of these, like this one, was likely a right away for a county road as well from the, the, uh, the width of it, but the terrain there was favorable and it was on the route. This was in uh, uh, Bowie County, uh, some wonderful ruts uh, up near Dalton. And this is one of my favorites too in Hughes Springs. You can, you can see a bit of the swale there, but it's exactly where it should be. And I just liked it, especially because there was more of that cane growing right in the middle of it. I tried to get the landowner to promise never to cut it down, but I'm afraid to go see if that worked out. This was a really great find and not that long ago, this landowner uh, uh, had a lot of, managed a lot of timber property and we monitored flood gauges on the uh, big cypress for about three months to get the water level down low enough where we could see these exposed stones crossing the creek exactly where the road uh, would have terminated. Now this is, you know, there's no way to know what the era was, but you can see the cypress trees to the uh, upside of that photo uh, have been there growing in the middle of that trail for a while. So uh, pretty old uh, relic that we found there. And then along the uh, Panola County line, County Line Road from uh, Tatum uh, to the south along the east side of Martin Lake, Martin Creek Lake, uh, County Line Road cuts right through Trammell's Trace crossing uh, the ancient route. Part of it goes under the lake and uh, it's, it was the original County Line. This is another part of the county line uh, in an area not far from the Hendricks Plantation and trees and growth grew up in the rut because it couldn't easily be mowed or, bull hog or uh, bush hogged. Unfortunately, sections of the trace uh, look a lot like this right now. You can't really stop progress, right? Uh, gates and fencing went up on the old county line road uh, when they first started uh, doing this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been up into uh, Ruskin, Harrison County, where they're doing this lig mining. This thing is a beast. Uh, my pickup truck would fit in that in that bucket, and just for scale, that's a door. Um, so you can imagine, 
Uh, they do make a mess of things. You know, they re-landscape it. I think it's a lot like uh, sifting the land and putting it back so it's like a tinker toy little landscape to me. But they put hills and creeks and it goes back and, you know, it's just part of the deal. And unfortunately, it goes right through some uh, extremely uh, important Caddo sites. Uh, this is a, a photo that, or an image that uh, Tim Perla uh, produced. And the mine permits really couldn't done a much better job than going right down the edge of, of Trammell's Trace. But the, the good news and the bad news is that they destroyed a lot of, of uh, of sites, but that's the archaeological sites from the atlas that were produced as a result of the requirements to uh, to uh, study those sites and and uh, do that uh, do that research. So uh, a lot of things are gone, but a lot of a lot has been learned uh, in that area. So the future of Trammel Trace. This is a you know a, a 200 plus year old road trying to survive in a you know, a terrain between uh, Texarkana and Nacogdoches, uh, basically a lot of farming, a lot of trees, a lot of uh, bush hogging and bulldozing, and in the case of our farm, uh, watermelon farming. Uh, but I'm doing my part, and some of this has been intentional and some of it hasn't. When you, when I started this, you Googled uh, Trammell's Trace or Nicholas Trammell, there was a lot of, of just myth. You know how things just get in one spot on the internet, it gets repeated over and over and over again. I'm sure there's a, a cool internet word for that phenomenon, but uh, for good or bad, if you Google Trammell's Trace now, you get a pretty heavy dose of me, as you uh, might imagine, not too many people are, are pulling that. Uh, there is a website uh, that I maintain to uh, keep people that uh, sell the book there and uh, uh, downloads of maps and other, other articles. I've got county by county uh, maps that a lot of people download to find out uh, where the road goes in their particular county. The Trammell's Trace Facebook group is a lot of fun and uh, about 1,100, 1,200 people are in there right now uh, and we just carry on conversations, uh, you know, uh, updates and pictures about what's going on, uh, Trammell descendants. Uh, it's a pretty active in group and a lot of fun. Uh, of course, the map that uh, many of you have uh, is on the website and that was based on Dawson's map and, and uh, Nancy Tiller, uh, Dr. Jim Tiller is a geographer in Huntsville and Nancy's a, a fantastic cartographer, uh, helped produce that map. Uh, but there's also a Google Maps version of it on the website. And so you can take a driving tour through East Texas and find uh, where you might be in proximity uh, to the trace. And I have a lot of people that take advantage of that. Uh, the maps at the Portal of Texas History, uh, the nicest surprise I've had in the whole history of doing this was going into the uh, TSC Atlas and discovering that they had used my coordinates to put Trammell's Trace on the map. And uh, it's the only other one besides the El Camino Real. And so apparently I'm the only guy serendipitously curious and persistent enough to put out coordinates that they could actually put out there. Pretty neat. Uh, handbook of Texas, the hand, handbook in Arkansas, and uh, Bob Vernon, who many of you may know, is Bob's an archaeological steward uh, for Cass and Bowie County, and a brilliant guy, and not a man of few words. So even the historical marker he produced at a crossing up there uh, is full of words. It's a huge marker. It tells the story of Trammell Trace very well. This low light picture that he took of the ruts growing across the pasture where that marker is. It's just wonderful and uh, really defines it. And that's, that was the, the one historical marker that we know is accurate. A lot of the others, uh, you know, have content errors. Uh, the proudest moment has been when the uh, uh, Martha Fleetus from the uh, DRT calls, I remember where I was, where I was sitting, what it looked like outside, and said, hey, we think we'd like to do a Trammell's Trace uh, marker for the DRT. And I'm thinking, and they mentioned the medallion. So I thought, oh, cool, there'll be a little medallion. They came up with this ginormous black granite marker with a medallion on it, the map inscribed into the front side, and more words about Trammell's Trace on the back, including my name. So I'm the only person here who has not died and has a headstone. That's the way I'm seeing it. 
pretty special though. They put that up uh, near Bonita Creek Park, just off the main street, exactly where Trammell's Trace would have come into uh, Nacogdoches. So let the rut nutting continue. Uh, Tom Gann uh, of Lufkin, um, longtime uh, realtor up there and a fifth, sixth generation Texan. Uh, he and I are working together on a book about Spanish colonial East Texas in a, in a period between the expulsion of Los Adias and the coming of the Anglos when things got kind of messed up. They had a nice little cozy economy going there. Uh, uh, Antonio Guillebarbo was pretty much left alone way out there in, in East Texas. And then the Louisiana Purchase, the neutral ground agreement, the sacking of Trinidad and things just went downhill from there. Uh, but as part of that, we're mapping a, a, a network of BDI related trails south and west over to uh, the uh, Trinity River crossing uh, where uh, Bucarelli was found. Sandy Rogers, who's on the uh, call tonight, uh, has been out there with me with the landowners to that wonderful spot. And that, uh, that marking there, Austin's Old Road, is uh, part of that network, and it's a road that went from Nacogdoches uh, to La Bahia and did not intersect with any other of the recognized historic trail for El Camino Real. So that, that Austin's designation for it as Old Road has not been seen very well because uh, the maps that allow the detail uh, are not available uh, on the web. I had to get a high resolution version to see that. Uh, but Bidias Creek, uh, the, the location of what were later Cachado villages and likely Bidai villages as well. So we're working on this network of trails. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of survey calls or ruts. And so a lot of it is speculation and, and um, uh, least cost path of uh, analysis through a GIS, hopefully, to recognize that. So maps like this, if you've looked at, you know, these old maps from this earlier period, uh, my friend Bob Vernon calls them here to there maps, a here to there map. Like it kind of goes that way, but you just can't reliably depend on one of these to be accurate in any particular way. This one shows BDI villages at key points in these, these uh, intersections of the uh, waterways, uh, but these roads to the south of the El Camino Real heading down to La Bahia and, and uh, the long way around to, uh, to Bayar. Uh, or where our interest lies right now. Uh, this is uh, part of that Austin's uh, colony in ad adjacent country. This is a, a DRT map, but you can see one road coming into the east that he mapped on this one. There was another contraband road to the south and then multiple roads to the south and west, current and older roads. And the road that was used changed uh, over the years, but those two to the bottom, to the to the south, are the ones that we're uh, focusing on for right now. And there's uh, Austin's old road, the, the from Nacogdoches. Uh, he's getting over to uh, the falls, uh, El Salto in Spanish. And the nice thing about uh, a Spanish word for falls is that there's multiple falls all up and down the Trinity River. Uh, there was also a a ranch uh, managed by the priests in Nacogdoches, directly south of Nacogdoches, called El Salto. So anywhere there was a falls uh, was occasionally a crossing because it meant shoals uh, on the Trinity River there. But it's that old road that's a focus of our attention. One thing I've learned over time, you know, of producing the book and, uh, you know, having been a lifelong reader, thanks to my mom trying to write something I would like to read, and telling the story to people, I have learned that story is just absolutely essential. And that's what hooks people in to stories like this from a guy like me, or the stories that you tell about, about uh, more scientific endeavors and things that are important in different ways and stories that are told in different ways. But stories help define why somebody should listen. They make a real difference in helping people make the connection. And the connection for me was standing in that rut on our family farm and going, oh my gosh, history crossed across here. And it just, it takes on a whole different meaning once you know the story. Visiting these ruts and these sites all up and down the trail, about 180 miles of it, uh, just meant that these landowners now have personal stories too. 
uh, this family has the picture of that ground truthing rut uh, on their wall now. And so people ask him like, well, okay, what's that? And they get to tell their story. Uh, this uh, Jacksonville College student did an undergraduate day project, which absolutely earned her a rut nut uh, t-shirt. Logan Hope in 2017 was a senior at uh, Stephen F. Austin. He entered this uh, poster in the Texas GIS Forum, uh, participated in by state employees and consultants and high dollar folks producing posters to enter in the contest, three feet by three feet, and he won using the data points that collected and photos we taken. And, uh, you know, Logan now works up in, uh, in Washington State, and he sent me an email not too long ago where he said, you know, I was driving, I was thinking about Trammell's Trace. And I'm like, gotcha. You're, you're done now. Uh, in doing this work, I met Joe Brown. This guy's an ex-DPS trooper. Uh, when I've been around Joe in groups, most people have come up to him and told stories about how he pulled him over. But uh, Joe lives has a garage that looks a lot like heaven to me. Uh, and, and so in talking about his... Uh, growing up, and uh, this is a 1950s era uh, metal detector, uh, he told me about uh, being a, a young boy visiting Millsy Williamson, who had land along the east side, along County Line Road on the east side of what's now Martin Creek Lake. And Millsy Williamson is a, a very well-known uh, archaeological site for that area. Uh, as a young boy, Joe Brown picked up these trade beads in the drip line of, of Millsy Williamson's barn and made that bracelet. That's his connection to his story. Uh, this, is, this is a couple that owns a great place called Armadillo Acres up in uh, Marion County. They rent their land out to groups. Dr. Jim Harris from Marshall, Daryl Ware uh, were in that field survey that I showed two pictures of uh, earlier on. Um, these guys were uh, in Cass in Marion County. The landowner on the right was pretty happy to learn about uh, the history of what was going on. These are the two uh, property owners for that rock-lined uh, site across the Cypress. And uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. The guy on the right played in this rut next to his grandparents' house, just like I played in the rut at our house. And that swale that you see going off into the distance is uh, a well-defined route just north of that, that bamboo swale in uh, Hughes Springs. And then our neighbors uh, in Russ County. This is uh, three generations of uh, folks uh, right along that road near us that have totally bought into the story and the piece of history that goes through their road. This six mile stretch of uh, Trammell's Trace that goes through there, the, the, the last survey call is just north of us, uh, was also the, the the first farm to market road in Texas from Shiloh Cemetery down to, uh, to Mount Enterprise. Some of you know this very wise man. Uh, I, I love this, Jay, Jay Russell uh, had this quote on Facebook and I, I love it. Archaeology is 99% dirt and paperwork and 1% the stuff that keeps you hooked. But that 1% sure makes the heart go pitter patter, right? And that's really what telling these stories is about, is, is connecting people uh, to history so that it's, it has meaning for them personally, so that it connects to their emotions and they might have the chance to, uh, to get some chill bumps as well. So I thank you for following me down the road and the opportunity to come uh, rechristen the great ship uh, HIS. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. What's your opinion about the, these different portions of the trail, what they originally were? Oh, it's, it's pretty clear from uh, the, the stories, whether you, you can't map it, but these uh, early Caddo trails uh, went directly down through that area. And, and you can almost connect the villages. Looking at some of these key sites uh, on the atlas will tune you into that uh, pretty closely. And that, the archaeology that's been done because of the lignite mining uh, tells the whole story. I, I don't think, uh, well, he was credited with that route from uh, Pecan Point at the Red River down to Northwest Cass County. And that trail 
probably was not used a lot. The pecan pointers weren't known to make their way into the South. They were pretty happy doing what they did up there, trading post, buffalo trade, Indian trade, uh, and taking things back to the East. Uh, there was a, ro a road that went to the East from there along the second flood plain in the Red River. So some of their historical markers describe him as a surveyor or a trailblazer, and he was not. He just followed around and he, he chopped a few trees down for that ranch. But the other one, just like that turtle path, the more people use it, the wider it gets. And uh, particularly across the Arkansas section, the Southwest Trail, there were stories galore about travelers, um, you know, coming up to a turnout. Uh, and just like any mud road in East Texas right now, if the water's over the road, what do you do? You go around it to the side, you do that long enough, you got a new road. So they followed existing routes, and I, I don't think anybody was a real trailblazer as much as a, a trail user. We do, oh, but Trini Mendenhall, uh, the, the county will not allow us to sell books uh, in here, so my wife will be operating a contraband operation uh, with me out in the parking lot afterwards. I hear nothing. Yeah. It is. Okay, click. 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 Yeah. I'll... There we go. Ah, excuse me. I, I just don't go away. I, I just want to say, you know, we've had a lot of speakers, and I got to tell you that I think Gary Pinkerton is such a comfortable speaker. I felt like my grandpa was telling me stories. I mean, I think it was absolutely wonderful. Let's give him a round of applause. It was fabulous. Are there any, we're checking to see if there are any questions um, in the Zoom world or in the... But honestly, we do not have to be out of here till 845, so everybody visit. My God, we haven't seen each other in a year. So please stay and visit. Okay. Does anybody on Zoom have any questions? Thanks everybody for attending, everybody on Zoom and Facebook and